Cool. You were born ready, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Pete Wywoody. I'm with Rise for California, uh, the California Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice and 350.org. And uh, we're thank you for joining. We've got 16 people on so far. More people will be streaming in. Um, uh, thanks for joining. Today we're going to be talking about September 8th and the rise for climate jobs and justice in San Francisco. I uh, hope you're on the right call. You'll be with us for the next hour and we're going to be talking about a bunch of wonderful things including some exciting uh, art projects, how to get engaged in your community, how to reach out to your neighbors to bring them in, and some real uh, powerful stories about people fighting against uh, climate injustice in their communities and building towards what is going to be the largest mass mobilization around climate justice, around the intersections of economic, racial, and climate justice in on West Coast history. So uh, more people are joining. And, um, I'll do a quick intro of uh, folks who are on the phone at the moment. We've got uh, 42 participants that, um, so far, and uh, we're expecting some more. If you uh, want to throw into the chat where you're calling in from, uh, we'd love to see uh, from all over the state uh, and all over the region, folks who are joining us from uh, uh, the Bay Area and beyond. So go ahead and throw in the chat uh, where you're calling in from. And um, I'll now introduce our panelists. Um, and we're going to walk through a, a series of uh, things today. We're going to talk first about why we're doing this, why September 8th is important. and uh, and what uh, the, the goals of the day are going to be and, and how we're going to build the largest mobilization in uh, the West Coast around climate work and climate justice. And then we're going to talk about uh, the specifics of what's going to happen, and, um, where we're going to start, where we're going to end, how you can get involved. We're also going to talk about how you can get plugged into the uh, most important, the most important, biggest um, uh, mural of all time. Uh, and so we'll uh, get some live painting going on right now during our, our program. Uh, and then we're going to answer your questions. So um, uh, don't be shy. Pop your questions into the chat and uh, we'll be able to answer questions about some of the logistics, some of the uh, reasons why we're doing choosing this day, um, uh, any of the questions that you've got, uh, start to pop them, pop them in the chat. And then at the, at the end of, towards the end of the call, our team here will be taking those questions one by one. So, uh, just do a quick introduction of who you've got on the, who you're going to hear from today. And again, my name is Pete Wywoody, and I'm on staff with the California Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice. And uh, joining us is Annie Dobbs Kramer from the North Bay Organizing Project in uh, Santa Rosa and, and north of San Francisco. Uh, Martha Hawthorne from uh, SEIU 10 to 1, the largest service workers uh, uh, local in the Bay Area. Laura Meredia from Scope in Los Angeles. Um, and, uh, and then David Solnit from uh, uh, a movement artist in 350.org uh, staff person, as well as uh, Matt Leonard and Vanessa Warheit, uh, who are on staff at 350.org, who are gonna walk us through uh, how we're all gonna make this happen together. So, so let's dive in. We've got 47 attendees from across the state and folks have uh, uh, chiming in saying they're calling from Sacramento, Santa Monica, Santa Cruz, um, Woodland, all over the state. Uh, um, so uh, Ventura County, San Jose area, Chico, El Sobrante, Santa Barbara, Ukiah. Really, we have Oxnard, every portion of the state. Thank you all for calling in and joining us. So uh, our next question for you all is, uh, did you join us on this call about a month ago? This is our second of the statewide calls. So there's something popping up for you right now on your screen. Were you on the last statewide call in June? Um, uh, we're trying to get a feel of uh, who's new and there's definitely uh, uh, plenty of room for folks who are new to this call. We'll walk through what we're all gonna do together. And there's also new information for if you were joining us last month, uh, uh, how you can get engaged, how we can build on what we built last month and, and start getting, you know, we're only 51 days away from the mobilization itself. So plenty of uh, new details and uh, tangible things to plug in. So go ahead and vote now. Um, and uh, we'll see if, uh, how many folks were on last month. Um, can we see the results? So let's move on. And uh, thank you all for voting. And uh, 
Well, there we go. Great. So uh, over half of you, uh, uh, two thirds of you all weren't on the first time. So that's great news, bringing new po folks into the fold. And for those of you who were with us, again, there's going to be a lot more uh, tangible information to plug in. So uh, thank you all for voting. So we're up to over 50 attendees from around the state. And now let's go ahead and I'll introduce uh, uh, Laura Meridia from Scope in Los Angeles. And uh, Scope is a uh, economic just and racial justice organization in South Los Angeles and they're part of the California leadership team. And Scope is a long, Scope is a long time organization. Laura is a long time organizer and the research director at Scope. I'm working on a variety of issues, including climate justice and building the future that we all deserve. So, Lauda, please take it away. Cool. Thanks, Pete. Um, can you all hear me? Okay. Good. Okay. Um, so, just to give a recap again, well, my name is Lauda. Um, I'm Muraida. I'm the research director at Scope. Um, we are a South Los Angeles. Um, community-based organization, and I'll give a little more um, information on SCOPE itself in just a few minutes, but did want to give a recap first um, to get us started. Um, so for folks um, that are new and even folks that are returning, um, I know there's a lot of um, abbreviations, a lot of jargon that um, feels like it's being thrown around, but um, just to recap, the, the GCAS, or the Global Climate Action Summit, um, is a key piece of what is um, bringing folks together here in September in San Francisco. Um, and this is a large summit, an international summit that's been convened by Governor Brown, um, Michael Bloomberg and others, um, really focused at um, elected leaders. Oh, hold on, sorry. I just started seeing the screen and <laughs> got away from my notes. There we go. Um, and so this is really focused also in a lead up um, to COP24, which is next year, I believe. Um, and so to build momentum um, and commitment from, um, from leaders, companies, um, to really raise those commitments to address climate change. Um, but we know that this like rhetoric and even the ambitions of, of these elected leaders and, and business and um, these kind of um, even, you know, global NGOs really won't be enough. Um, and we know that a lot of the work that's being done to address climate change is actually on from coming from frontline communities and social movements. Um, and that we're also using science and social justice and to create um, real solutions, to create leadership, um, and to educate these leaders and hold them accountable um, to the change we want to see in our communities. Um, so we know this Global Summit is bringing together, like I said, um, people from around the country, um, a lot of spotlight on San Francisco. And so it's a huge opportunity. Um, this is really like a pivotal point um, for us to come together as a movement and um, not let um, Governor Brown and um, Michael Bloomberg and others take all the credit um, which they will um, for, for climate leadership. And so this is really our chance to put forward an alternative um, narrative and um, put forward actual grassroots um, solutions and, and stories from the front lines. Um, and so that's where the rise for, rise for climate jobs and justice California comes in. Um, and so this is part of a global day um, of action. And so there will be hundreds of events happening across um, across the world, um, but San Francisco is really where um, this will, San Francisco will be anchoring um, a big piece of, of the action. And so this will be where the movement, um, where the summit is. Um, and so this is really where we have the chance to make the most influence, to really have um, the loudest voice knowing that the world is watching um, the summit in San Francisco and what is um, the conversations that will be had there. Um, and so this is really also um, a chance to bring um, diverse communities, campaigns, and movements together and really lift up um, the intersecting issues um, and amplify our collective voices and really think of um, this moment as a container for all these um, diverse communities and stories um, and to really collectively build power. So this is really around um, bringing together multiple movements, a movement of movements, 
um, and really elevate the um, multi-issue platform that we are um, bringing together um, as, um, as the rise for climate jobs and justice um, under that frame. Um, so to share a little bit about um, why SCOPE is involved in the leadership team um, and excited to um, participate in um, the PCM, the March in San Francisco, versus um, per se um, actions and activities going on in LA, which, we're, we're, which is where we're based, is because we really feel like this is um, a pivotal moment and um, an important opportunity for the political education um, and leadership of our members. Um, to give you all a little bit of background, SCOPE, um, it's a long acronym, um, speaking of acronyms, um, we're strategic concepts for organizing and policy education. Um, and we've been around for about 25 years. We're based in South Los Angeles and we're actually um, a community-based organization that was, um, that was formed in the wake of the 1992 LA uprising in South LA um, that happened after um, the Rodney King verdict. And so we've really been um, a power building organization, really um, wouldn't consider our organization issue-based per se, but we're really always talking to um, folks um, living in South LA, folks that were on the front lines of unemployment, of disinvestment, um, that had really been um, shut out of a large-scale economic transition that happened um, in the 60s, 70s, as um, the manufacturing um, sector really moved abroad and a lot of jobs were outsourced. Um, and so um, the work that we do is really based on the issues that come up in organizing conversations um, with residents in South LA. Um, and so we've really been working over the past two decades to, um, to tell and really reframe the story um, that, that the 92 uprising has been um, about criminalizing Black and Latino um, residents um, and really tell the story that um, these folks have been um, systemically marginalized um, and criminalized and um, folks actually have um, plenty of solutions to the problems and conditions they face. Um, and so we've really been working to elevate um, the voices of um, these Black and Latino working class families um, that are still there, yeah. even though now we're facing um, the pressures of displacement um, and criminalization that's really, um, that has really changed um, the community of South LA. Um, I would say that we really did come into work on climate um, from an economic justice lens um, and a racial justice lens and really seeing that once again, um, our, our country and our world are, is going through a significant economic shift as we um, move away from our fossil fuel based economy and, and really start to acknowledge and address um, the threat of climate change and the impact that we're already seeing. Um, and we know that our community has already been hit first and worst by many um, of these shifts in the past and really felt that um, seeing the landscape as it was, um, it was important for us to really um, build upon our economic and racial justice analysis of the issues um, faced in South LA and think about the environmental and climate justice lens um, that are disproportionately impacting Black, Latino, um, immigrant communities, women, low-income um, families as well. Um, in South LA, just to give you a sense, um, we have some of uh, the largest um, oil fields. We have urban oil fields and some of the smallest setbacks or space between um, oil drilling and um, homes and, and um, other uses like parks and um, commercial uses. Um, and so that's one of the um, campaigns actually we're working on in LA. We're working on um, pushing for a setback ordinance um, in LA to, that would um, essentially um, really end all oil drilling. We want a setback that um, is high enough um, that would actually end oil drilling in LA. And so we're really gonna lift that issue up. We're gonna, is we're gonna lift up the issue of 
of jobs and workforce development and really ensuring that um, communities that are on the front lines of disinvestment and economic marginalization are first in line um, for the benefits of the new um, clean energy based economy. Um, and we're of course going to lift up the issues of black and brown um, multiracial organizing. These are key pieces of, of our work and we really felt like this was a moment for um, to deepen the political education of our members and our staff. Um, and so we're excited. This is the first time we participated um, as staff and members in um, an international um, space like this. So this is also a great um, learning experience in general of just how um, to, to um, really build and leverage um, relationships for greater um, power for the issues that we work on and the issues that our allies work on. So we're really excited um, to be coming to San Francisco from um, South LA. And um, we're excited also to just take um, on this new role in um, the leadership team and work with um, new folks on lifting up the issues and stories from um, South Los Angeles. So now I will turn it over to Annie, right? Yeah, thank you so much, Laura. So now we're going to hear from Annie. That, um, uh, and again, powerful stories coming from Los Angeles. Again, uh, the, uh, the event in San Francisco is going to be representative of communities all across the state, including folks from Los Angeles. And we'll hear from the North Bay now, from Annie Dobbs Kramer, an organizer with the North Bay Organizing Project. Hi, guys. My name's Annie. Uh, I hope folks can hear me. I'm in a coffee shop, so pardon the background noise. Um, I am an organizer with the North Bay Organizing Project. Um, I really want to just appreciate what Laura said. Um, we also are an organization that is based in sort of the needs uh, of the community. So we're not a single issue organization, but rather we choose the issues based on what, um, what our community looks for. So currently we are working on uh, what we're calling Roots, Roof, and Refuge. So it's um, inter an intersectional uh, lens looking at immigration, housing, and climate, uh, climate justice, environmental justice. Um, and really we chose those issues because um, in Northern California, we are the wine region and we have a huge, huge, huge uh, immigrant population. Um, we are also facing enormous displacement. So before the wildfires, which hit our community last October, we had seen a 50% increase in rents in the last five years. And since October, they've gone up an additional 36%. So we're looking at like almost 100% increase in rents for folks, which is not surprisingly pushing out um, our most vulnerable folks. So low-income folks, folks of color, people with disabilities, young folks, just getting massively displaced. And we have some of the most expensive land now in the entire world. Um, so the way that we look at our work is really that it's all about home. You know, it's about home having a roof over your head at night. It's about not getting um, uh, deported tomorrow. And it's also about, you know, taking care of the land that takes care of us. So we really also kind of I resonate with what Laura said. We came to this work through through social justice and really as we began um, with our leadership examining um, the extractive economy and, and really beginning to understand the deep connection between um, the way that the extractive economy um, extracts labor from people, the way it treats uh, black and brown communities, um, and also the way it treats women's bodies and the earth as commodities. Um, we just started realizing that you can't really um, attack one part of the problem without attacking it all. So that really brought us into the climate work. Um, as I said, we just had some really devastating, horrific wildfires. Um, and that really crystallized how important climate work is because uh, Fountain Grove, which was the rich area of town, which actually served as fuel to burn the poor area of town, it, it was actually built in a fire path. And um, indigenous folks in Sonoma County know that that's just a place that you don't build. Um, but so we're seeing um, the, yeah, climate change is just really, really concretized for us. Um, by the fires and understanding that this is not a one-time thing, but something that's going to happen all the time. And we really got to be thinking of solutions. And also, Laura, not to steal all your words, but just amplifying that we know that folks that who are on the front lines of the crisis have actually the solutions, right? People who are closest to the pain, closest to the solution. And um, so... So we just wanna, wanna acknowledge and lift those up those solutions that are real and are there. Um, so just really quick, um, we are stoked to be on the leadership team. Um, and yeah, I think I'm gonna pass it back to Pete now. 
in the sake of time. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Al. Thank you so much, Annie, and, and thanks, uh, Annie and Lauda. You can hear the stories that people are bringing to bear in San Francisco on, on September 8th. And as Annie and Lauda both mentioned, they're part of the California uh, leadership team, and uh, in a second, who's also a part of that. This is these are the, the guiding voices that called out, recognizing that the summit was coming, and we needed to do something big and powerful, and put forth a massive vision of uh, what what real climate justice looks like, what real climate leadership looks like on September 8th. And so um, uh, these also are intersecting movements that are part of the, the, there are a number of other movements that are falling under the umbrella, including the It Takes Roots movement that uh, um, uh, the, a number of organizations that are a part of, as well as the uh, there's a Brown's Last Chance campaign pushing Governor Brown to live up to his legacy, uh, as well as a number of other movement moments that are intersecting under the banner of uh, um, uh, Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice. You've heard Lauda and, and Annie uh, speak articulately about uh, why they're coming uh, in, uh, in San Francisco in September, and we're eager for you all to join us there as well. So, so what exactly is going to happen? Um, well, let's uh, turn it over to Martha. Hawthorne, who's a phenomenal leader of SEIU 10 to 1, uh, based in San Francisco. Martha. Hi there, can everybody hear me? Um, my name is Martha. I've lived in San Francisco now for 40 years. I'm a proud member of SEIU 10 to 1. We are the first union to endorse this California march because we are a social justice union. We fight for our members, our contracts, our rights, but the common good of everyone. We have workers in hospitals, schools, libraries, city and county buildings, and also in a lot of nonprofits. Uh, here in San Francisco, as probably people know, the most expensive city in the world now with the greatest degree of inequity. And we consider our climate to be a climate that needs to be, that needs to promote equality and a better vision of the future. So we're excited to host this big march. Uh, it landed in our laps and we will rise to the challenge. We, um, on the leadership team, have been, um, I think building a really exciting event. We've already had two mass uh, organizing meetings when hundreds of people have been involved from all over the area. We have plans, we're engaging our communities, and we are building the groundwork. We really are for all of you throughout the state to actually the state and the world to join us on September 8th. Uh, we are building for a huge march, the key global action, the eyes of the world will be on us. And we're kicking off a whole week of really exciting events. So what's going to happen on the day of the march? That's the question, September 8th. First of all, buses will be coming from all over the state to, to join those of us who live here. Uh, the lineup will be at 10 a.m. at Embarcadero Plaza. That's near the foot of Market Street, right on the, the subway line. And the march has the idea of organizing these tens of thousands of people into themes to guide the lineup. And we want to encourage uh, groups to self-organize contingents. And now there you see the march that's going from the Embarcadero Fair Building all the way down to Civic Center, City Hall. Now our contingents will have meeting places along the way and we would like all of you to self-organize with, with, with each other in your own communities. Now these can be indigenous leaders, labor unions, beekeepers, anti-fracking efforts, renewable energy supporters, really almost anything. Um, we want to encourage people to be more than marchers more than marchers, but organizers, organizers of their communities, their communities, their friends, their interests, their passions. So many of us have so much to say, and this is our chance. This really is our chance to raise our voices together in a very strong way. There's already many contingents being planned, and soon we're going to have a map of the website with the themes and suggested meeting points. And we'll also have links to contingents uh, for individuals to join. We will be ready. Now at about 11 a.m., the march will begin down Market Street to Civic Center and end at City Hall. 
where we'll have music and a resource fair. Groups can table, they can engage people in their campaigns and efforts, and uh, we'll really have a time to talk with each other and celebrate our efforts to save ourselves on the planet. I'm really proud of this effort, and uh, we want to have as many people there to table. We'll have a website uh, ready for you to sign up. And best of all, best of all in this March, um, we're planning a unique activity, a massive world-breaking, we hope, uh, record-breaking street murals. Uh, so we'd like to hand it off now to the arts group. Um, great, so thank you so much, Martha. Uh, and now we'll hand it off to David, who, as he always does, is doing his best to show, not tell. So David. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. Great. Um, one thing that's been a, a feature in the last few years in the Bay Area is a lot of movements have been doing street murals, taking children's tempera paint or more recently clay paint and painting our message, our image and our stories on the streets. I don't know more has done it twice in front of Wells Fargo World Headquarters. Uh, we've done it in front of the ICE Headquarters. We've done it in front of the Chevron Refinery and so on. So one of the ideas that's emerged is that when the march arrives at Civic Center Plaza, we want to do the world's largest street mural. Uh, and so we're looking for 50 groups to do circular murals in the streets surrounding Civic Center Plaza. And we're setting up trainings to train people to do that. And we'll set groups up with some supplies. And we also want everyone who marches, we think there might be as many as 5,000 opportunities to help the, those 50 groups uh, paint those murals. So, and there's a, a training coming up on Sunday, July 29th uh, at local two from 2.30 to 5.30. Um, the other two things I just wanna lift up is uh, really encourage groups to think about if you're marching, and especially if you're marching with a group, how are we gonna, how are you, how are you gonna look? What's the art you're gonna make and carry? Um, and there's some online resources. There's an art kit. I think it will be up on our website soon. It's right now on the riseforclimate.org website. There's art builds scheduled in the Bay Area. And finally, there's a, a powerful group of song leaders who are planning songs while we're painting. And then the last thing is uh, the Peace Poets, the group who wrote uh, some of the songs we've sung in the street, People Gonna Rise Like the Water or I Can't Breathe. Uh, they're going to be joining us on an arts tour going to uh, 10 to 15 cities around California, supporting those communities with building the, making the visual art. Uh, the Peace Poets will teach song leading skills and also teach the songs and offer performance. So that's a resource if people are interested and uh, see everyone in the streets where you're painting clothes. Great. Thank you so much, David. And one other thing that, so you can see that we're uh, we're ambitious in our vision as as we need to be. This uh, we need to have a vision that matches the urgency of the moment. One of the other things, in addition to the mural project, as well as the uh, projects that of uh, how the actual march is going to look, is uh, we're going to be coming around the state to people to places all over, uh, doing an arts tour, having the peace poets come and uh, do song leading, having. Uh, um, uh, uh, and having uh, the uh, folks training on how to do murals, and then also uh, signing up and saying, "Okay, here's how you get on a bus. Here's how we. Uh, here's what the march is going to look like. Here's what our contingent is going to look like." So, if you are interested in hosting in your local community a stop on the arts tour, you can see the email address at the the screen now: arts.ca at riseforclimate.org. That will set you up, and we'll uh, we'll be in dialogue with you about setting up our next uh, uh, arts tour uh, so you can build a mural, sing a song, and jump on a bus. Um, we've already got stuff set up in the North Bay and in uh, Southern California. So, okay, great. So we've heard from Laura and Annie about the, the urgency and how uh, communities that are impacted are rising up. We've heard from Martha <coughs> about how, how organized labor is plugging in and what the actual day is gonna look like and heard from David about all the beautiful pieces that we're gonna put on the earth itself and move ourselves towards a real climate justice, what real climate leadership looks like. 
Now, let's hear about how you can plug in, what, what exactly uh, we need from you and what you can get from us in order to uh, plug in. So first, keep thinking about your questions, put them into the chat, and we'll come back around to them, answer them at the, the end of the call, and the next, uh, we've got about 30 minutes left. But now I'm gonna hand it over to Matt, who's gonna walk us through some of the nuts and bolts of how to engage, so Matt. Links and toolkits and things that I mentioned. So um, bear me out. Um, some ways you can engage. Um, a big thing is to start organizing local tables. Um, that basically means you know a local coalition, working with partners or other organizations or other groups in your city or community uh, to start organizing towards rise. Um, we have a little bit of funding available to even help stipend local organizing in regions around the state. Uh, a few groups are already starting to take advantage of that, but in these last two months, we really want to push it. Um, and if being able to stipend someone part time will help, that'd be great. Oh, now I'm on two cameras. This is crazy. The camera's on. The camera's on this microphone, so you might want to go with this one. Oh, okay. Either way. Um, other things you can do: organize buses, um, charter buses. We're actually uh, in the next couple of days. We mentioned we'll have a big website uh, update. We'll have a toolkit uh, that'll help guide you through how you can organize a charter bus from your community. Um, we have some funding available to help subsidize the cost of buses to help make them accessible and affordable for people from a range of economic backgrounds. Um, you can organize a contingent in the March. Uh, as Martha mentioned, we're going to have um, some themes uh, in the March. And within that, you can organize a contingent. So you can actually not just march as an individual, but march collectively with your organization, group, uh, your issue your background, whatever your passion is. That can be anything from beekeepers for climate justice to a labor union to anything in between. Um, there's already a few contingents that are starting to organize, um, but people are welcome to sort of self-organize in, in whatever way and however they wanna march and show up in the, on September 8th. Um, we've got working groups. Um, there's at least a dozen at this point, um, a lot of which are working here in the Bay Area. Um, but a lot of those can happen remotely as well, especially things like outreach, communications, digital. Um, we've got some listserv set up. We've got Slack channels for those that use Slack. Um, we'll send you some links to all those things as well, but it's a great way to get plugged in more actively to the organizing. Um, one of our great partners, 350 Bay Area, has created the People's Climate Calendar. Um, we've got a link to that on the California Rise website but it's a listing for all sorts of events happening between now and the Climate Action Summit, from meetings to actions to trainings. Um, it's participatory, so if you've got an event you're doing, you can add it to that calendar. Um, and it just launched in the past week or so, so it's gonna start uh, getting more and more populated. But there's already a lot of great events on there. Um, we will have, uh, you can get involved digitally. Um, Many of you are hopefully already RSVP'd for this on the website, but we really want to encourage you to do so. So we have some sense of how many people are coming, but also so we can communicate important information back to you around logistics, updates, information. Um, the other way you can do that is also from your phone. You can text uh, RISE CA to 83224. Uh, and that's a way you can get updates uh, about the event um, through the phone. Um, we have a digital toolkit. Um, if your organization works in digital spaces, it's a whole toolkit that offers content for websites, um, draft language for email blasts, a way that uh, you can actually track uh, people who RSVP for the march and be able to get those names back to you for future ongoing organizing work. It's got social media tools for Facebook or Twitter. Um, you can go to 350.org slash toolkit um, and we'll get that, that information out to you. Um, we, you can do a stage, uh, an I'm rising for dot, dot, dot photo booth. Um, as, as Annie and Laura and others mentioned, people are coming to this and being involved in this for all sorts of different reasons. And we want to make sure that we highlight the diversity and, and the reasons why people are, are going to show up in March. Uh, one way to do that in advance is to do these little photo booths. It's super easy. It just takes a piece of paper, a pen, and, and some sort of camera. Um, we can help promote them on social media, get them out, and we really want to show the real breadth and depth of who's coming to, to rise for climate jobs and justice. Um, social media, we've, you know, like many things these days, we've got some hashtags. Um, we're using the hashtags rise for climate and hashtag climate jobs justice. 
So whatever your issue or message is on social media, tag it that way and we can help expand the audience. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll send out an email with all these links uh, and make it really easy for you to, to follow suit. Um, and what's really exciting is coming up in a bit, in about a week, we are gonna do a global recruitment day um, for this. And I'm gonna hand it over to Jocelyn, who's gonna tell you more about recruitment day. Sorry, we're trying to fix this real quick. Okay. Hi everybody, my name is Jocelyn Cancino and I'm the field organizer here at California Rice. I'm very excited to be telling you all about our recruitment day. So um, our recruitment day happening here in San Francisco and the Bay Area will be held on Saturday, July 28th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We have two canvassing, canvassing sessions going on. Um, and so I really encourage um, you and any networks you have, um, members, staff, volunteers who can come out and help us get the word out. We're gonna be door knocking um, all of our neighbors here in San Francisco. Um, so we do have the website which you can sign up to today. It's uh, California, sorry, ca.riseforclimate.org slash recruitment day. Um, and we will show you what that page looks like. So yeah, you can sign up here um, and you will see that there are uh, different opportunities for you to sign up for. And this also includes people who are not in San Francisco. You can also canvas in your own neighborhoods. Um, we created a really amazing toolkit that has all the uh, canvassing guides and also for, for door knocking and for street canvassing, canvassing. And we also have a sign up sheet and our beautiful postcards and posters that you saw earlier. So we really just wanna get a lot of people to go out and actually physically talk to people. Uh, digital organizing is great, but what about people who don't actually have access to the online World Wide Web. So we really just wanna make sure that we get as many people as we can out there on San Francisco, September 8th. You know, um, it's very important to get all our frontline communities as well. And um, we hope you can sign up. We are also going to be having phone banking sessions, which you can also do from home. And I will be sending out more information about that um, after. Um, we've also already disseminated 50,000 postcards, and so we are just very excited um, to see how many people are helping us with outreach, and this could not be done without you, so we really, really appreciate it. Um, and did we go to the, the toolkit? Yeah, so we're going to show you the toolkit real quick and what that looks like. We will also be sending you the link for that. So as you can see, we have our door knocking canvassing guide. And you can see you can easily create a walking list and map. It shows you how to create a turf. Um, so you can divide it up with other volunteers who are also going to be door knocking with you. How to create a wrap. It also comes with a sample of one. Um, what supplies you need and everything to, to get it set up for you. Yeah, thank you. And we also have a street canvassing guide for people who might not have a large capacity to create turfs. Um, we do encourage people to go out to busy intersections, um, you know, uh, plazas or campus quads and go talk to people um, there. So we have all the, all the stuff you need and that toolkit. Thank you. And back to Pete. Great, thank you so much, Jaws. And uh, thank you to Matt as well for walking through uh, how to get engaged. So um, now we're going to, I'm just gonna run through a couple of things that you heard. One, go to the website and RSVP right now, ca.riseforclimate.org. And uh, we're trying to count every, the, the way that we know that we're on track to get to be the largest mobilization in uh, 
in the West Coast history is uh, to make sure that you RSVP for the march. So go and RSVP right now. While you're on that website, ca.riseforclimate.org, you can uh, sign up for recruitment day. As Josh said, we've got folks calling in from Oxnard, from Palo Alto, from Chico, all over the state. If you sign up on recruitment day saying, yes, I want to go talk to my neighbors, we will send you flyers. We'll put, put flyers in the mail and, uh, and uh, guide you through how to go knock on doors and, and get folks to plug in. Um, uh, and then uh, you've heard a lot about the website being updated. It is in process of being updated and soon we'll have resources about the mural and resources about uh, buses, about how you can sign up for a bus on the website. So make sure that you've RSVP. This is the way to, to know, uh, get those updates, RSVP at the website there. And uh, you can go to peoplesclimatecalendar.org. It's also linked to on our website that uh, people can um, uh, find out the other activities that are happening and see all the intersections that are happening at the march. So now we're going to take a little time. We've uh, seen a lot of great uh, questions coming in through uh, the, the chat. Thank you for all of that. So now we're going to hand it over to Christy and Vanessa to walk through some of the questions and uh, get some answers to uh, the great thoughtful questions you've been bringing forward. If you have more questions, now is a good time to keep putting them up into the chat. And, uh, and so I'll hand it over to Christy and Vanessa. Hey everyone, can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Awesome. Um, okay, so I've been taking notes on some of these questions, but um, it's, uh, Every time we do this, we try a different method to try to make it work. I'm going to look this way so you can see me. Um, and I am up to uh, the, the question about Chinese language. So if you get any other questions after that, um, but I will start with what I found at the top. And the first question was, um, will, be, will the art be on the streets or on the sidewalks of San Francisco? And um, Matt or David, can you answer that? I think it's the streets, isn't it? It will be on the street. Um, again, non-toxic washable paint and or chalk and or charcoal or clay. So no environmental harm. Um, is, there, is there any work being done on transportation from the South Bay? Um, that is definitely something that groups can organize from the South Bay. There is nothing yet that we, um, we are not organizing buses, but what we are doing is providing resources to help other groups organize buses. And um, we are um, also going to have some information on our website about uh, public transportation to help facilitate people understanding how they can get on Caltrain, um, which goes all the way down almost to Gilroy right now. So, um, and if you have more specific questions about that, you can reach out to us uh, directly. If you're with a 350 group, you can contact me, vanessa.warheit at 350.org. Um, uh, what if the events calendar doesn't have everything on it? Well, we can only control what people put on it. So <laughs> encourage your friends to put their actions on it. Um, there is going to, we hope eventually going to be a calendar of affiliate events from the GCAS at the, general, at the um, Global Climate Action Summit's website. It is not yet, they do not yet have those posted. Um, so ultimately you should be looking at both places, the Global Climate Action Summit website and our website to see the full range of things. Some things will be posted on ours and not on theirs and probably vice versa. Um, but between those two, you should be covered. There is also another site called thehumsum.org, um, which may also be uh, posting events uh, that are affiliated with the GCAS and with RISE. Um, where can we sign up for tabling? Matt? So in the next day or two, we'll have the website updated and we'll have a form on there, there to sign up for the resource fair. Um, so just check out the website in the next, next couple of days. Great. And then where can we sign up if we want to host a mural? Great question. We have an email for that. It's arts.ca at riseforclimate.org, right? <laughs> that right? That's right, we just got it today, we're so excited. Um, so so yes, yeah, send an email to that email address. There's also a slide with that email in it that we're gonna be sending you after this call, so you will have all this information. Um, send us an email at that email address, 
and we will uh, get you on the list as somebody, and then somebody will be back in touch with you to coordinate if you need training and get you hooked into a workshop so that you get all the skills and resources that you need to be able to have the confidence to host your own mural. Um, uh, how are we accommodating people with disability? Um, I can take a stab at that, but maybe Matt can fill in if I don't have all the answers to it. The route is going to be on Market Street and to the Civic Center, and it is serviced by underground transportation that have elevators and escalators. So for people who maybe can walk a little distance but don't want to walk the full, it's 1.6 miles, I think, is the route. So if you can't manage to walk some of it, but you can walk a little bit, you could take um, BART and get off at Powell Street or Civic Center and then get up and walk just the last bit. Um, for people who can't walk but can sit, you're going to have to bring a seat yourself, but you can come and bring a portable seat and sit in the Civic Center and there will be a ton of stuff going on. So even people with really limited mobility will be included. And then is there other information that you have about disability access? I think that's most of it. There is um, a proposal oh, that will have um, a number of electric vehicles tailing the march at the very end. Uh, and they can also potentially be available to help pick people up uh, who aren't able to, to walk or finish the march uh, and be able to transport them to Civic Center as well. Cool, thank you. Um, I had a question about email links, but now I don't remember what that meant. Uh, I think it just meant, are there links to the various emails that we keep throwing out at you? Yes, we are going to send everybody who RSVP to this. Um, I think as well as, it's a broader list than that, but generally, definitely everybody on this call will get a copy of the recording of this call, and you can go back at your leisure and read it in a calm way and write everything down. So don't panic if you've missed any of the links that we've been throwing out. Um, where is the toolkit that you guys were talking about? We will be emailing that to you. That will come out with the email with the link to this. We'll also include the link to the toolkit and a link to the materials for um, the recruitment day. Are we um, capturing uh, names now? Are we putting a call out for people that are interested in the recruitment day packet? Yeah, so we could uh, show the link. So if people um, sign up, we will have their names. Okay. Okay, great. So if you sign up at that link, we'll have a packet ready for you and out to you post-haste. Um, where will we get information about contingents? Um, that will be coming on the website mm -hmm. very soon. Uh, it's, it's super close to being finalized what those contingents will be. And once they are finalized, we will be posting that. And then it will, yes, he has more information. Yeah, so, so there, there will be on the website the places to plug the contingents that already exist, the labor group, the health group, the faith group, et cetera. But there's also going to be a space where folks can create their own. And, and this is, you know, when folks ask about uh, how will um, folks from the be included? How will folks from uh, people with disabilities be included? One of the most beautiful things about this effort is people stepping in and saying, yes, I want to build a contingent of uh, young people from San Jose for climate justice. And then they can create a contingent on the website and start organizing that way. So in the next uh, uh, few days, there will be a space where you can go and create your own hub on the website. And then folks can start organizing to to build that out and then other people when they go to the website can find you and plug in and build out that cool thank you pete um i'm getting more questions coming in um what is our relationship to the poor people's campaign matt do you want to answer that sure so uh the, the poor people's campaign and the organization folks have probably heard of this over the, over the spring the, a number of organizations working on uh, economic justice is one of the central tenets of the Poor People's Campaign was care for the earth, and they have been directly plugged into our organizing work here. And uh, you saw David Solnit earlier; he was uh, helping out a great deal with the art of the Poor People's Campaign, and that sponsoring organizations have, uh, are joining us and in, in marching in San Francisco on September eighth. Very cool. Thank you very much. Um, will there be materials in Chinese? That is a great question. So we do have a translation team working on different materials in different languages. Do we know if Chinese is one of them? Mm -hmm. They have 15 different languages. 15 different languages. Awesome. And then 
uh, if people want to request those, do they, will they just be on the website? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this will shortly be on the website in all of 15 different languages coming to you soon. Um, have we done or are we doing outreach to immigrant and refugee rights groups? Mm -hmm. So the, uh, absolutely, the, the leadership team is made up of a couple of immigrant rights groups as well as um, uh, uh, the, we've got an organizing committee with it, which if you're a part of a, a organizing group, we encourage you to join and you can reach out to us here and uh, plug in that way. And um, we are, we're certainly working on, with uh, immigrant rights groups and, and uh, what well, this moment, you know, part of, part of what's happening in this political moment, folks have been so engaged with uh, the family separation and detention of the abolish ICE movement is making those connections about how the migration and part of what is happening with migration is forced by uh, climate change and we all need to stand up together in order to get the world that we all deserve we have to tackle both of these things immigration and climate justice at the same time cool mm -hmm. thank you pete um uh, will there be opportunity for art trainings to learn how to make cool art like that awesome bird <laughs> yes, there are a ton of awesome art trainings. Um, we will start probably by early next week. That events calendar that you saw that is on our website will have, um, uh, it will, there is a tag. You can search by different types of events. So as Matt said, there are going to be lots and lots more events coming. So it, to keep it from being too overwhelming, we've got a tagging system. So you can search just for arts events and we will be having our art training events included in that. So look there for specifics. What, what I, I can, can do is put in a plug. plug. There is going to be a training this Saturday. If, is David still on the line or did we lose him? Okay, so in, um, do we have that posted somewhere? So there is a training at David's Art Space in Richmond. If you are anywhere near Richmond, um, which is in the East Bay, here in the Bay Area, there is going to be a training on Saturday. Um, but he has a whole bunch of them planned for throughout the Bay Area already. And then there's the arts tour. And the arts tour, in addition to being a performance with the Peace Poets and learning song leading, will also be training in how to make banners and art I don't know about puppets, but maybe talk to David and he'll probably. So that would be a question. If you are specifically interested in getting trained in making art, that arts.ca at riseforclimate.org website is the place to send your questions and we will get you the information that you need. Um, can anyone here answer, because I can't, the, what is on the agenda for the July 24th meeting? Yeah, so uh, this meeting, uh, the July 24th meeting, this will be the third of our mass meetings uh, here in the Bay Area. And we'll be talking about uh, recruitment day. We'll be talking about the, the logistics of the event, what's actually going to happen, and setting up the, the mural. Um, it's sort of in parallel to these meetings. So, so we're doing these statewide calls. We've got folks on this call from Oxnard and, and Chico and everywhere in between. Uh, and the, these meetings in, in person, we're also going to be handing out postcards and handing out the palm cards and setting folks up with like, okay, this is the neighborhood that I'm going to go talk to in the next couple of weeks. Cool, thank you. So, so basically, if you've been on, I guess the maybe the question I'm reading between the lines here, but the question I think is, if you've been on this call, should you also come to the meeting? We'd love to have you. I was going to say, gonna yeah, because they're really fun, mm -hmm. and there's food, and there's music, and you just get to meet people in person. And every single one that we've been to has been packed with like hundreds of people and ton of energy, and you get to really connect with people from different groups that you don't know. So it is even though, and also we're throwing a bunch of information at you tonight, but this is another way to sort of really figure out how you can best plug in. So I personally recommend it. Everyone here is nodding their head yes. Definitely show up if you can. Not, Not to make those of you who are out there who can't come feel bad. So we love you too. We wish you could all come. Um, is there a, a designated location where buses will be landing? The answer to that is not yet. We are going to have a buses page up and running within the next few days on our website. Once that is there, we will have an RSVP link. And if you are planning a bus, even if you don't have it fully nailed down yet, please register your bus with us and once we have a sense of how many buses are coming we will then make a plan for the perfect place for those buses to come and a timing and a schedule so uh if you're planning on 
on sending a bus to San Francisco, and we hope everybody is planning on sending many buses to San Francisco, please register them next week on our website. And then we will get back to you shortly thereafter with a, probably a tentative location and then a final location once the date is really upon us so that everybody can be safe and get to the right spot. Um, what is the best way for musicians to plug in? That is probably the arts group, is it not? Um, well, I'd say a, a couple of things. One, you can start, once the website is updated, you can start a, a, a hub where you can obviously march as musicians, but also be generating ideas of what, of how you want to uh, um, represent on that day. So that's one way. And, um, and the other, I think connecting with the arts group, uh, we, we uh, glossed over a little bit. We're certainly going to do the mural project, which is one beautiful artistic undertaking. We're also going to be leading collective songs with uh, tens of thousands of people writing songs specifically for this event. So um, plugging in with the arts group and you can see the, uh, again uh, through the, the website, you'll be able to join the arts group through the website soon. Cool. All right. I'm just scrolling back through to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Are there any other? I, I saw one. That somebody mentioned what's the relationship to PCM? It's, mm. uh, it's a great question. This is the anchor mobilization of a national and global mobilization that uh, the People's Climate Movement, the folks who uh, probably marched or uh, have been allied with the People's Climate Movement that had a massive march in 2014 and a massive march in 2017. This is the next iteration of that, with that uh, obviously in response to the Global Climate Action Summit, but this is PCM California style. Um, uh, so we are one and the same and, and, uh, and excited to be the anchor mobilization for the national and the global day of action that's happening all over the world. Um, all right, we have a couple more questions coming in. Is there a sister march happening in Southern California? Yes, there are in fact two sister marches for sure. Uh, one in Los Angeles and they don't yet have a plan for exactly what they're doing, but I understand that they are um, committed to doing something in LA. And then there is one also happening in San Diego. And I know um, Masada is working on that and Jay, I, th I see is on this call. So I think um, folks there, but they will be on the riseforclimate.org website as a, as a sister march. The, the basic premise is what we're hoping is that anybody who's within a seven hour driving radius of San Francisco will come to San Francisco and anyone farther out than that will host their own events. And LA is kind of on that cusp. Um, so some folks from in LA are also forming buses and we hope people from San Diego and even farther afield will try to put buses together and come to San Francisco as well. But yes, if you are in LA and can't make it up here to San Francisco, there is a place um, for you on September 8th down there. Um, there are a couple of others. Um, PCM when you uh, when the mural is in the street, Chinatown, Washington, and Kearney, is it done early before traffic? Will the city wash it off? Mm -hmm. Well, so, it won't be in Chinatown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's now seven o'clock. Thank you all for joining. And um, uh, so we've heard a lot of really inspiring stories about why folks are coming to San Francisco and on September eighth. Uh, the number one thing to remember is go uh, register for the march. So go to uh, ca.riseforclimate.org and uh, sign up, RSVP that you'll come to the march. If you RSVP for this uh, uh, webinar, you'll get a recording, an email with a recording, with the uh, website, with the uh, recruitment day packets, with all of the materials that we talked about. And uh, encourage folks to sign up for recruitment day, sign up for the RSVP, and then look for information on how to organize buses, how to organize a mural, all of that will be coming soon on the website. Big thanks to all of our speakers, Martha Hawthorne, Laura Meredia, uh, Annie Dobbs Kramer, Matt and Christy and uh, uh, Vanessa and Josh and the team here. Thank you all for your exciting work. We're looking forward to seeing you in September.